Hi, Coach. Thank you for joining us today. Go ahead and start with any thoughts on this weekend's match against the Sounders. Yeah, thank you. Um, good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Um, we're ready to play uh, this important match. Always fun. Always uh, doesn't matter where in the table these two teams are. Uh, this derby is uh, is always you know the game that we both teams uh, are waiting for. They're very competitive, and uh, this mutual respect in the work that uh, each team do. Um, and uh, when we are on the field, it's about uh, competing at the highest level. So uh, the, this game for us also is very important because it's at home, because it's in front of our fans, um, looking to, to get three points. Now, uh, with uh, a team um, that we have been able to recover more players, uh, now we have uh, depth finally, um, and uh, and we're looking forward to this match. The, the the guys have been preparing very well this week, and uh, and now with the heat because it's going to be very hot. Uh, it seems that every time that we played Seattle, it has happened a few times in the past. The weather uh, turns to be uh, hotter, and and I think it's uh, the prelude to to this derby that uh, always you know brings a lot of interesting things. So. Looking forward to it and, and ready to be able to play. All right, we will open it up to media. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We will start with Kyle Garcia. Hi, Gio. Thank you so much for your time. I was wondering, just with the past in, with the past week, you guys obviously earned an awesome win last weekend um, that really kind of seemed to snap you guys out of a little bit of a funk that you had been in. How important it, was it for you guys to kind of get a little bit of momentum with that big victory heading into now what is obviously considered the most important match for a lot of Timbers fans always trying to wanting to beat Seattle. How important was it to get that win last weekend heading into this weekend? Yeah, it was important because as you mentioned, we're coming from a few matches that we didn't found uh, our regularity, our play, our, you know, um, uh, our energy, uh, even though I think uh, we only had the, the plays back uh, it's somehow complete uh, from uh, the game against the Galaxy, which it was not a good match, as I mentioned before. But then right after, I think we reacted very well. There was no doubt uh, that the team uh, needed to get uh, a little bit together more and, and uh, that the results were, were, were going to come. And I think we were unlucky against San Jose. I think we deserve a little bit more. Um, we got a point. And then we came into this match against uh, RSL, which I think it was a very good match. We were able to get three points. And uh, and I agree with you. It's important to get this momentum going into this game uh, against Seattle because the confidence now is higher. They, they believe in, in, in what we want is, is you know, is, is been growing. Uh, the guys playing a little bit longer together in practice also is, is a good thing. And, uh, and we remember also uh, the last time that we played Seattle in our home, we had a very, very good match. We played very well, and we probably deserved more that day. But I continue to say all the time, it's not what you deserve. That day, they were able to find, uh, you know, the goal twice. Uh, we only once. We lost to one. So we we very much looking forward to this game and and uh, and the confidence, the desire, the um, the energy of the players is is at a good level to be able to to have a good match th this weekend. Next, we'll go to Caitlin Murray. Gio, uh, Sebastian Blank Blanco has been working his way back to minutes. He played 45 in the last game, and based on how that's progressing, I'm guessing he'll be available for more Sunday. Uh, how difficult has it been waiting for him to get back to full fitness, and how important is it to have him potentially available to, you know, maybe start going forward? Yes, he, he's available. He's been uh, getting minutes. He's been doing much better. He's been accumulating more minutes, and and looking stronger um, and uh, he's been uh, missed, you know, first of all, uh, because he's Seba, but I think even more so because of the situation that we have gone through uh, with so many injuries and, you know, and, and having uh, a very limited amount of players 
basically almost the, the entire uh, beginning of the season uh, makes us, you know, be in a situation which we need uh, each player in a, in a bigger way and Seba, of course, uh, uh, even even in a bigger way, uh, as I said before, um, because uh, he's an important player for us. So the fact that he's been accumulating minutes is important. He will be available again, uh, probably to get a little more minutes in, in this match. Uh, he's looked good in practice. He's looking sharper, and, uh, and it, you know it's been a, a very good work of, of uh, week of work for him um, the, this week. We have time for a couple more questions. So if you have any more, please raise your hand, and we will go back to or we'll go to Joe Becker next. Uh, Gio, good to see you. Um, you mentioned the weather. Uh, it seems like it's been a lot hotter this year in Portland. Is is that something that the players do get used to throughout the season? And uh, do you do anything to prepare for it? It's, uh, it's a good question. Uh, it's been a lot hotter, uh, not only this year, last year as well, um, you know, to be something that we had to handle. Uh, it makes it a little more difficult because it's no use to Portland being so hot. Um, and uh, and the only the only thing that we, we can say is that uh, uh, we try to you know measure practice and in, in the the time of practice also upon uh, the weather you know and and uh, it's difficult to get used to it uh, but the more that we get this and the more practice that we have of course the more that we can endure so we, we definitely are in a better place now with the heat than the then uh, when we we passed through a month ago, which was very hot in Portland, um, so I, I will say that now is uh, is probably a little bit more uh, adaptable for us to be able to play in in this type of weather. Next, we'll go to Nick Krepke. Hey, Gio, do you have an update on where Steve's at and his progress in coming back? Yeah, I think uh, Steve uh, is looking like he's, he's going to be available to be able to play. So um, uh, I think by tomorrow we'll know for sure, but uh, everything is looking like he's, uh, sh he should be able to be available to play. Next we'll go to Orlando Sanchez. Hi, Gio. Can you describe what makes this rivalry so special between the Timbers and Sounders? This, there's so many reasons why, you know, I think, uh, first of all, uh, since these two teams have been in the league in MLS, I think it's, it's been one of the highest rivalries, if not the highest, uh, because of, you know, uh, the, this, the vicinity of, of, of the two cities, um, what have been, uh, you know, known in between the two, there's always a rivalry between the teams, the sports, the city, uh, so that is the first thing, uh, the Cascadian Cup, uh, the, the fact that the, these games are always very competitive and you want to brag about, you know, winning this match. Um, the, the dislike, you know, that sometimes uh, is among fans in, in uh, you know, from, from one in the, in the other. Uh, the, the quality of the players that each club tries to bring in order to be relevant. And, uh, you know, I, I just think there's so many reasons and uh, it's been, you know, fun personally to be part of this. Uh, I respect Brian and what he's done there for these past uh, few years as well. Uh, he's done a great job there. Uh, but as soon as the whistle starts, um, you know, there's a, a, a huge competitive vibe and, and uh, whatever you are, either in Seattle or in Portland, I mean, you know, the fans are very much in, engaged in the game. And, and I think especially this one, uh, there's a different energy. I think that it has accumulated even more so. So I think uh, this is going to be a fun match uh, because I think the, 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 fans, uh, the fans are really ready for, 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 uh, for this game um, and looking forward to it. I'm going to go back to Caitlin Murray. Hi, Gio. I just had a, a follow-up on um, Sebastian Blanco. You know, it's, it's been sort of a longer road for him to come back since he was injured last year against the Sounders. Uh, what can you say just about his effort that, you know, he's put into his, his recovery and um, what his attitude has been like and how he's approached um, coming back, I think, you know, taking longer than anyone would have wanted? Yes, I mean, you know, we spoke at the beginning of the, the this year that we expected Seba hopefully to be available for the Conca Champions, 
And then uh, he had two setbacks and, and unfortunately those two setbacks didn't allow him to be able to return when we expect him to be back. And then from that point, uh, we had to make sure that we did it the right way in regards to, you know, accumulating minutes and making sure that he was feeling the right way, that he didn't have any muscle issues that were limiting him from, from uh, getting closer to playing. So it's been a long ride uh, since that time that he got injured in Seattle. Um, and he's been working his way through, his way in. Um, we know how Seba is. Seba is extremely competitive. He's, you know, has a lot of passion in, in himself. He's a great competitor. And uh, even in the times that he wasn't ready, he wanted to be part of it. He wanted to jump in the field. He wanted to participate because uh, he feels it. He, he's, he feels very responsible in, 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 uh, you know, in uh, improving the team. And, and it's been uh, a long waiting for him to be able to, you know, to get to this point. And, and now that he has accumulated minutes, that he's looking better. Now I think he's, uh, you know, uh, he's becoming even more important. We see the few matches. I think, uh, you know, the two assists that uh, he was able to, you know, provide, uh, it shows just the quality in, in what he can give to this team. And, and it's great to have him back. All right, we'll do our last question. We'll go to John Rojas. John, can you hear okay? Thank you. Gio, ¿me escuchas? Te escucho perfecto. John, ¿cómo estás? Muy bien, gracias. Gio, eh, una pregunta con, con Santi. No sé si la, la contestaste en inglés. ¿Está disponible? ¿Ya está trabajando? ¿Cómo ves su, su llegada, su progreso para poder aportar? Y luego, si el equipo con esa llegada, con, con Seba ya tomando el ritmo de empezar a competir cada vez más, eh, se acerca un poco más a tener todas las herramientas que necesitas para terminar la competición en, en un punto alto. Sí, John, uh, lo voy a responder. Lo voy a responder en inglés para que entiendan todos eh, tu pregunta. So the, the question about Santiago Moreno, uh, how is at the moment, what is the expectation? And uh, also uh, talking about now if uh, with Seba and some other players coming back, hopefully soon as Goda as well. Uh, now having the tools, what, you know, what is the expectation? And uh, first of all, in regards to Santiago Moreno, we hope that he arrives soon. Uh, that he joined us um, in Portland. And, uh, and then from that point, it's about uh, doing the right steps for him to adapt, to make sure that we see when he will be ready to, to be available to play. He might be available uh, to play you know, earlier, but uh, we just have to make sure that we look at him and, and see his prog progress and where he's at in order to make the selections for him to be on the bench. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then in regards to having the tools, yes, uh, John, uh, when from the beginning of the season, you, you are limited that you cannot even have 20 players on the, on the bench total traveling. Um, you know, um, then uh, finally, when you have the ability to be able to make selections and you never want to leave players out because, you know, you feel for every player that is no part of it, but finally finding the, sele the, the possibility to make selections and have 20 players to be able to travel, to be able to be available for, for matches uh, is something that we did not have, uh, that I did not have uh, basically the entire year. So it, it is great to finally get to this point. Uh, the fact that we have survived um, in, 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 in accumulating some important points, uh, sometimes playing well, sometimes being more pragmatic, uh, is credit to the players uh, because we still have a good opportunity now in the second part of the season uh, to make a statement. And now that we have the tools, you know, little by little getting there and with Nescoda hopefully being with Santiago, the few last players uh, that have to now, you know, progress and get there. Now for us uh, will be a lot better to compete because we have opportunities, choices, and, and I think we'll be a lot more competitive. So we're looking forward for that and, and I think this weekend, I hope that we can start showing it as we have done so far these past two matches. All right, thank you so much for your time, Gio. That will be it for today. Thank you. In media, if you guys could hang tight, we will be joined by Sebastian Blanco here shortly. Thank you. Hi, Sebastian. Thank you for joining us. Hi, how are you? Good. We are going to start questions off with Nick Krupke. 
say, but what's the significance to you to be this close to perhaps being back for selection in the 11 in your long journey again against Seattle club you got hurt against with a full house and, and a, and a derby that uh, so many of course love to watch this Timbers play. Okay. Uh, Paloma, estás ahí? Sí, aquí estoy. Okay. Uh, lo voy a explicar en español, así puedo explicarlo mejor. Sorry. Eh, nada, que um, es un partido especial, como, como todos los que, los que tocan jugar contra, contra Seattle. Eh, y bueno, tener la posibilidad quizás de, de, de ir de entrada en un partido de, de, de este tamaño y, y delante de nuestra gente lo hace mucho más especial. It's a very special game, especially being against Seattle and especially to have the possibility to come back to play my first game against um, Seattle at home in front of our fans. It makes it a lot more special. A reminder to media, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll go to Caitlin Murray. Sebastian, you've been building your minutes. Uh, I'm just curious, how how are you feeling now? Are you 100% yet? I hope. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I think so. Uh, I prepare myself very hard for for feel 100%. I think we are in a good way. We we build up. Uh, we was three games in a week in the last last week and finished with a 45 minutes, I think was a, like a preseason. I complete six or seven game start on the bench. And I think we're ready. We're ready. We had a, a long week like this for training, for training hard with the team and, and prepare myself for, for the, the game on Sunday. So I hope and I think I feel like like 100%. I don't know if for 90 minutes, but for maybe 70, 75, depending how much the, 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 the coach decide. Next, we'll go to Joe Becker. Uh, yeah, thanks for coming on today. Um, and it's good to see you. Uh, you've been playing the game your whole life. Uh, and then you've been out for a while. Now you're back. I'm just curious, at this point in your, your life, how much do you still enjoy the game of soccer? How much I enjoy the game? Yes. Uh, more, more than before injury. I always enjoy the game. Maybe on, on the field for the people think that I didn't enjoy the game because I was angry on fighting and but it's my it's my feeling and I enjoy the day that I know I enjoy the game, I will retire for sure. And after can play for more than 10 months, I can see everything in another perspective. And I think now I can enjoy more the game the minutes, the locker room, the training. So maybe it's the last last couple of years in my career and I want to enjoy a lot for this. Next we'll go to Nick Krepke. In this long, almost like 10 month process to get back to being starting minutes, what allowed you to keep your head up and keep the positive mindset? I know your, your family's close to you, but what else was it that just kept you in that positive mood? The idea to back to the field, of course, try to back in in the, in, the, in a good uh, physical and mentally, um, and because I told you before, I won't enjoy my last. I don't know how many years I have. I, I will play, but I won't enjoy the the, the many years as possible. And uh, of course, my family they help me a lot, and I won't return the love. Uh, for them and for the people who support me a lot during the injury. Next, we'll go to John Rojas. Thank you, Seba. Gracias por el tiempo. No, por, no por qué. Uh, mira, dos, dos cosas. ¿Cuántas veces durante el proceso soñaste despierto? Con ese tema de, de disfrutar el juego, ¿no? ¿Cuántas veces soñaste despierto eh, esto que estás viviendo de, desde los poquitos minutos que has ido teniendo poco a poco, ir aportando siempre, ¿no? Cada vez, cada vez más, cada vez más. Y luego, este proceso de recuperación um, te ha hecho cambiar algo en tus rutinas, digamos, diarias, en mantenimiento, en recuperación, etcétera? Bueno, 
contestando la primera pregunta, juego al fútbol de los cuatro años, empecé en cancha chica, en cancha, de, en cancha grande a los ocho, prácticamente es, es, el fútbol para mí es, es un estilo de vida, es, es mi manera de vivir, eh, estoy tratando de, de terminar los cursos para, para seguir ligado al fútbol después, o sea, la pregunta de disfrutarlo, lo disfruto, no, no, no imagino mi vida sin el fútbol, por eso traté de recuperarme de la mejor manera para volver a disfrutarlo, para volver a estar al 100%, no me sirve estar a la mitad, ni al 80, ni al 70. Y creo que, que en los últimos partidos, los últimos minutos, me he sentido muy bien físicamente, sobre todo con la pelota después de tanto tiempo. Eh, y, y trato de disfrutarlo, no pensar tanto en lo que pueden decir de afuera y nada. Creo que hoy pasa más por, por sensaciones personales. En cuanto a cuidado, siempre fui, traté de ser lo más profesional posible. Eh, sigo, sigo viniendo dos horas antes, yéndome dos horas después, porque eh, el día que no lo tenga lo voy a extrañar mucho, entonces trato de disfrutarlo, venir, prepararme, hacer la terapia, gimnasio, eh, seguir fortaleciendo la pierna y, y también, bueno, mi, mi manera de, de, de comportarme fuera, ¿no? tratar de descansar en la medida de lo posible, eh, obviamente tengo nenas chiquitas, y, pero mi manera de comer, que trato de comer sin, eh, sin harina, sin lácteos, sin azúcar, eh, y bueno, día a día van saliendo cosas nuevas y tratar de, de que el fútbol se está longevizando y tratar de llegar a, a ser un jugador cada día más maduro. ¿Tenemos alguna pregunta más para Seba? Ok, Seba, gracias por tu tiempo. Gracias por tu tiempo. Gracias por tu tiempo. Gracias por tu tiempo. Gracias por tu tiempo.